I'm not sure whether we're at the beginning of the beginning or the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning, but we spent the year on Innovate 2016 talking about the election, and this is one of the first shows post-election. Uh, in the shows this year, I always said, well, we'll have you on after the election, and one of our stars this year was Frida Kapoor Klein, a partner at Kapoor Capital. Um, uh, and a very committed, passionate, political, social thinker. So, Frida, welcome back to Innovate 2016. Thank you. You don't look very happy. I'm not very happy. I'm uh, deeply troubled. Uh, this election is very unsettling, and especially, uh, no pun intended because of the dog, but it has unleashed uh, horrific behavior. And very short time ago, um, I was in the Slack channel with my Project Include colleagues, and somebody reported that an African-American close friend of all of ours uh, was called the N-word on the streets of San Francisco no reason other than it's now okay to do things like that. So is this what you most fear about the outcome of the election? Um, it is one of the things I fear, um, but it's not just about language. And we know that language has a cumulative effect and it changes perception and it changes behavior. Um, so I'm worried about a host of policy uh, changes and I'm worried about a host of behavior changes. Frida, I know you've been quite critical in your career of Silicon Valley and some of the inequalities and cultural practices. How do you expect this revolution, uh, this, this election, I said revolution, or maybe reaction, how do you expect the, the Trump presidency to change Silicon Valley? I hope it will galvanize Silicon Valley to get out of their bubble, uh, to face issues that they've actually had some hand in creating, to do something about income inequality, to get serious, finally, about diversity and inclusion. Uh, I think those things could make a big difference. Technology is not now, never has been neutral or value free. Technology can be used for good, for evil, and it's time that tech companies stood up and had a voice in recognizing that and saying how they want technology to be used. Frida, as you know, there's been a lot of newspaper articles about the impact of Twitter, in particular, and Facebook fake news on the election. What do you think the role of technology has played in this election, and particularly in the success of Trump? Well, I don't know uh, all of the data. There certainly has been a lot of fake news. There's a lot of back and forth on what percentage of the news was actually fake news. Um, I think what we know is that not enough was done proactively and preventatively. I always ask myself, what if diversity and inclusion had been taken seriously 10 years ago? We'd certainly, we've been running our Summer Math and Science Honors Academy. We've finished 13 summers. Every one of those major companies has been invited to be a supporter, has been invited to our events, and, and mostly they're no-shows. What if they had supported that? What if we were turning out 20, 30, 50,000 low-income kids of color a year to be trained up for these companies? What if I encountered in the hallways of all the major tech companies people of color, people from very different backgrounds, people from very different economic backgrounds? Maybe we would have built the empathy that didn't require something as cataclysmic as a Trump election. Frida, you are a pioneer, a genuine pioneer of it diversity. It means I'm genuinely old. Well, you're mm -hmm. a genuine pioneer of diversity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I know, I think at Lotus Notes, you were the, f the first company uh, to actually uh, pursue uh, strategies of diversity in the workplace. Well, uh, many, there were many well, companies. Yeah, anyway, but you were certainly one of the, the earliest yes. and one of the most outspoken and bravest. And because from my point of view, at least, it's very admirable. Thank you. How do you expect this election to change the struggle for diversity in the workplace, in and out of tech? 
Well, I think things are going to get, unfortunately, even more polarized. I think that's one thing that got exposed in this whole election cycle, is how deeply divided this country is and how divergent our views are. But I also see, you know, again, as an optimist, I see some real opportunity for coming together in new ways. Look, I think that both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party have been left in shambles in one election. That's an opportunity for something new and different that really speaks to issues like income inequality. You can have income inequality on the left, and we've seen a lot of that in Silicon Valley, and you can have income inequality on the right, and you can have a party that brings people together to have a whole different approach and a much fairer economy. Finally, Frieda, a couple of things that Silicon Valley people can do today or tomorrow, specific things. Well, to quote my Project Include colleague, Erica Joy Baker, companies can double down on diversity and inclusion. I think having those different perspectives, those different lived experiences in your workplace are going to help you understand what's going on, the impact of the Trump election. I think you can also make sure that you're supporting and creating safe spaces for those who are genuinely and rationally fearful right now. And I, th I think it's time for leaders to stand up and be counted for what's right. Well, as always, Frida Kapoor-Klein, real honor, pleasure, maybe not thank you. the most cheerful of times, but thank mm -hmm. you so much, and hopefully we'll have you back in more mm -hmm. cheerful times. Thank you. Thank you.